In our uh, previous example, we found out how in an adiabatic process, the temperature and the pressure, or I should say the temperature and the volume related to one another, and this is the equation that we came up with. It was a kind of a lengthy derivation, but anyway, it has a beautiful result. Remember, an adiabatic process is a process where a gas goes from one state to another state, and it, goes, it does that so quickly, relatively speaking, that there is no heat added to the gas during the process which means that all of the energy that must come to do work, or that, that must, uh, all the energy that is utilized uh, by the gas to do work has to come from its internal energy. And so therefore, when we look at the first equation of thermodynamics, we can say that delta U is equal to Q minus W, and since Q is equal to zero, that means delta U is equal to minus W, or the work is equal to minus the change in internal energy. In other words, all of the energy that it needs to do work came from within the energy of the gas. Now by using that in the first law, the first law of thermodynamics and the gas equation PV equals nRT and going through some lengthy derivation we're able to come up with this relationship. But we should also be able to come up with the relationship between pressure and volume in an adiabatic process. And so what we're going to do now is utilize this equation along with this. And what we're going to do here is we're going to solve this equation for T. So we say that T is equal to PV divided by NR and plug that into our equation over here. And when we do that, so instead of course T1, we're going to write P1V1 over NR. So that is P1V1 over NR times V1 to the gamma minus 1. And then instead of T2, we're going to write P2V2, P2V2 over NR times volume to the gamma minus 1. Oh, and of course, I do want a 2 there. Can't forget the 2. All right, now when we look at that, notice that on both sides of the equation, we have divided by NR, and N and R are constants. So we can go ahead and cancel that out. So our equation now becomes P1V1 times V1 to the gamma minus 1 equals p 2 v2 times v2 to the gamma minus 1. So here we have an interesting situation. We have v1 times v1 to the gamma minus 1. So here we're multiplying two things together and the bases are the same. That means we can add the exponents. Of course the exponents to, to this one is 1. So this becomes p1 v1 to the gamma minus 1 plus 1. That's the exponent from this v1 equals p2 v2 to the gamma minus 1 plus 1. Again, that's the plus 1 from this V2 right there. Notice then that the 1's cancel out and we end up with P1 V1 to the gamma equals P2 V2 to the gamma. And here we now have a new relationship between two of the state variables for the gas in an adiabatic process. So here we can relate T1, uh, T and V, and here we can relate, relate P and V. And th these two equations are really helpful and you'll see in, some in the following videos on how to use those equations to come up with the work done and the change in the internal energy of a gas in an adiabatic process. Again, if you don't remember what the gamma stands for, remember that gamma is equal to the ratio of C sub P divided by C sub V, and those values are equal to, depending upon what gas you're talking about, if we have a monatomic gas and we have C sub V and we have C sub P for a monatomic gas, C sub V is 3 over 2 R and C sub P is 5 over 2 R. Uh, for a diatomic gas, C sub V is 5 over 2 R and C sub P is 7 over 2 R. And for a triatomic gas, C sub V is 7 over 2 R and C sub P is 9 over 2 R. Now again, these are not exact values, they're approximate values. And also, if you don't remember, R is equal to 8.31 joules per mole times Kelvin. And for example, if we take a monatomic gas as an example, we want to calculate the gamma for a monatomic gas. That would be gamma is equal to C sub P divided by C sub V. The C sub P would be 5 over 2 R. The C sub V would be 3 over 2 R. Notice then that the R's will cancel out, the divide by 2's will cancel out, so we end up with this equal to 5 over 3, which is equal to 1.67. So you can see then, for a monatomic gas, this equation becomes P1V1 to the 1.67 equals P2V2 to the 1.67. 
And so that's how this equation is adapted to the gas, depending upon if it's a monatomic gas or a diatomic gas or a triatomic gas. For a diatomic gas, this would become 1.4. For a triatomic gas, this would become uh, 9 over 7, which I'd have to calculate that out. Um, matter of fact, I have a calculator. So 9 divided by 7 equals, it would be 1.29 uh, for the exponent. Of course, here, we'd have to subtract 1 from it. So here would be 1.67 minus 1, or 0.67, for the exponent for V1 and V2. And that's how you deal with the state variables in an adiabatic process. If you now want to see how these are used, stay tuned for the next videos, and I'll show you some examples of how to utilize all this in an adiabatic process.